What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns, 5 Hikers Who Mysteriously Vanished. Number 5 In late 2017, a young Canadian hiker by the name of Jesse Golganov went hiking along a series of mountains in Peru. His trip was expected to last for a few weeks, so he informed his mother not to be alarmed if she didn't hear from him for a while. However, after nearly a month passed without any word from her son, she began to worry and decided to head to Peru in search of him. Once in Peru, the family informed police of the situation and even hired a crisis management team to search for Jesse, though still no sign of him. What they did find, though, were two French hikers who camped with Jesse on September 30th, two days after Jesse's mother had last heard from him. According to the Frenchman, Jesse seemed to have been severely disoriented on the night of their camp, though he appeared to be just fine the following morning. This, however, was the only major bit of information the search team could find, and they still had no clue where Jesse may have wandered off to. At this point, Jesse's family says that the bills for his search and rescue were beginning to add up and already placed them in debt of over $1 million. To this day, almost six months later, Jesse has still not been found. His mother says she insists on bringing him home regardless of what may have happened to him, adding that she simply doesn't want to leave her son in Peru. And anybody who can help, if anyone has any information, provide it. If anyone is out there who knows anything, who thinks that they could help us. You can feel the frustration and desperation in Elisa Clayman's voice. Her son Jesse Galganov has not been seen or heard from since late September. Galganov was backpacking through Peru. For the last 15 days, Clayman has also been in Peru, hoping and praying for good news. Nobody just disappears into, into thin air. It just doesn't happen. There's people here. People, someone have seen him. Security cameras captured Galganov leaving the town of Juarez on September 29th. He was heading off on a hike. There's been no communication since. Clayman told BT that as many as 80 people are participating in the search, 30 police officers and a team of 50 searchers that the family is paying for on their own. And so far, no luck. But they haven't found anything. Nothing. Not a sign. Every report so far has just not been, been legitimate. Very frustrating. Also frustrating, Clayman says, is the lack of support he's received from a cell phone provider and Apple. Galganov was traveling with an iPhone. Apple provided encrypted data, which was supposed to have all of the data that they have on Jesse's phone. Maybe they could listen to this report and go in and provide it in a decrypted form. Here in Montreal, friends and family are doing their best to help out. One fitness studio in NDG is organizing fundraisers to collect money for the search. And it's really heartwarming. Really. So thank you. I'm going to come back to Montreal when I have my son with me. Number four. Keith Rayner was a sports writer for a Chicago-based publication back in the 1980s, though in 1988 he decided to take an extended leave of absence from his position, heading to Colorado to live in a small mining village for a short time near the Rocky Mountains. During his stay at the village, Keith became fascinated with the story of a man named Tom Young, who had disappeared from the village just a year prior. According to locals, Tom simply closed his bookstore one day, took his dog, and headed off into the mountains, never returning. In fact, when Keith moved to the village, he decided to open up a small antique shop, and his shop was actually placed in the building which Tom used to use. In his honor, he began compiling information about Tom's disappearance, planning to write a short novel about him. Though before he could finish, he himself went missing. On July 31st, 1988, both Tom and his dog were finally found in the mountains. Both had passed away from gunshot wounds to the head, with police stating that it appeared as though Tom had shot his dog, then turned the gun on himself. Just a week after this finding, in an eerily similar fashion, Keith decided to simply close up his shop too and head into the mountains. Though, as expected, he was never seen again. At the time of his departure, many people thought it was very strange for Keith to leave, as it was a six-hour hike to the nearest resting area and Keith hadn't begun to depart until about 4.30 p.m. Additionally, he wasn't carrying any sort of hiking gear and was by no means dressed for the occasion. After he never returned, a search party was set up to search for Keith, though nothing was ever found. Some believe that Keith may have faked his disappearance in honor of Tom, but others believe that there may have been foul play and that both of these men became victims. Either way, Keith's disappearance remains unsolved. Number 3 
In December of 1998, an eight-year-old boy named Derek went on a family trip to an Oregon forest alongside his father and grandfather. The family's plan was to hike into the woods and cut down a tree for Christmas, then bring it back home. Though not long after they had arrived, a terrible snowstorm hit, and Derek wandered away and became lost. Police were alerted to his disappearance and a search party was arranged. In the woods, they found a bit of blood, a candy wrapper, and a bookmark from Derek's school. Yet they never found Derek. Many were quick to assume that Derek had passed away from the extremely cold temperatures, though other evidence suggests that Derek may have actually been abducted, as another larger set of footprints were found alongside his that didn't match either his father or his grandfather. According to an eyewitness, a man was seen in the woods struggling with a young boy around the time that Derek went missing. Later on in 2002, a prison inmate came forward, claiming to have been responsible for Derek's passing. The man was a known pedophile and was actually in prison for taking the life of a 10-year-old boy. He then gave a detailed confession to police as well as directions as to where they could find his body. However, his body was never found. To this day, Derek is still considered to be missing. Number 2 in 1991, a 12-year-old boy named Jared took a hiking trip with his Boy Scout group to the San Bernardino National Forest. The group was expected to hike to the summit of one of the mountains in the area, though just as they were nearing the summit, Jared wandered away and disappeared onto the wrong trail. Once the group realized that Jared was missing, search and rescue teams were called to the area. They found numerous items that appeared to belong to Jared, as well as shoe prints matching the shoes that he was wearing. Though in spite of this, Jared was still nowhere to be found. Eventually, police found Jared's backpack. They began searching through it and found a camera that he'd been using to take scenic shots of the surrounding area. The film roll contained 12 photos total, 11 of which were scenery, though the 12th photo has left researchers baffled as it was a self-portrait of Jared that he took himself. His arms were too short to hold the camera far enough away, so the only portion of his face that were captured in the photo were his eyes and nose. From the photo, you can clearly see that Jared is horrified, and to this day, this is the last piece of evidence ever found of him. Number 1 August Rager was an 18-year-old from Oklahoma who was the valedictorian of his high school class and received a full scholarship to the University of Oklahoma back in 2013. To celebrate these accomplishments, his family decided to take a trip to Ecuador, planning on staying at a resort in the small town of Benos. While on the trip, the family decided to hike a scenic trail in the nearby area. During the hike, August was performing much better than the rest of his family and simply informed them that he would head up to the top of the mountain more quickly and meet them at the summit. August then sped away, yet when his family reached the summit, he was nowhere to be found. A search of the family's hotel was conducted, but still showed no signs of him. A search and rescue team was called, but still nothing. While police initially believed that August became lost, an eyewitness later reported to have seen August in a pickup truck with a man, headed toward the Amazon. Over the next year, sightings of August would be reported time and time again, yet police could never find where he was headed. As the case progressed, it eventually gathered the attention of President Obama, who called August a missing patriot. The Ecuadorian president then commented on the disappearance, stating that he would make it his personal mission to find August and return him home. But to this day, five years later, August has still never been found and his fate remains unknown. Yes, they do, and it's for a lot more than just a simple gut feeling. You know, hard to believe one year ago, August graduated valedictorian from here at Classen SAS. And tonight, the family tells me they say it's only a matter of time before their lost son is found. Ten months, three weeks, and come Monday, it'll be five days since August Rieger vanished on a mountain in Ecuador. No trace or trail to follow till this week. Recently, we have had a couple of what the authorities consider credible sightings. Not much, but the first serious payoff in a massive search, putting the unmistakable now 19-year-old's face in every corner of Ecuador. I mean, there are pictures of him on trees and, you know, in the coffee shops, all over. Every time somebody thinks they have seen August, they call the authorities, and that the authorities are very quick to respond. Officials are keeping those sighting locations secret. The Banos province, where August went missing, is known for its safety. But even the State Department labels surrounding areas as high crime, where kidnappings are known to happen. And they think that somebody has them, that um, there's a possibility that you know, they move around, but we don't know. What the family does know is no one's giving up. Private investigators are still working with local authorities. The Ecuadorian government even added a department dedicated to finding those who've gone missing. People like August. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.